I am a female engineer who likes fashion and not cars. Growing up, I thought that in order to become an engineer, I had to give up the girly things, and I was torn. Little did I know that I would prove myself wrong. Today, I would like to introduce you all to Suni and Aisha, they, and how they can help girls get into STEM fields. They are the product of a research project that I finished in the final year of my mechatronic engineering degree in 2023. Suni is a robot uh, solar powered mechanical unicorn toy <laughs> and Aisha is her companion. The proposed topic for the research project was to create a STEM toy for young South African girls. And well, being a South African girl in STEM myself, I immediately saw the value in this topic. So let's explore what making a STEM toy entails and why it is important to bring these products into the South African market. While doing my research on the impact playing with STEM toys has on early childhood development, I found numerous studies indicating that playing with STEM toys that encourage skills like spatial reasoning and critical thinking have a direct impact on a child's performance on subjects like mathematics later on in life. However, many of these studies indicated that the toy must be correctly matched to the child's developmental capabilities in order to educate through fun play and not frustrate the child. So this led me to Piaget's four stages of cognitive development. While we can develop STEM toys for every stage, I found that the concrete operational stage is best suited to engineering choice. Children aged seven to 11 are included in this stage and it's when they start developing problem solving and operational thinking skills, which are after all our foundation skills of engineering. So I wanted to make sure I created a toy that would captivate the children while showcasing these skills. This is how I decided on my pretty purple and white unicorn. Unicorns are the aesthetic. Go into any toy shop, I guarantee you. <laughs> so now focusing on the concrete operational stage, I designed the toy to have a fully functional solar panel, gear, box, and motor. And these are assembled by the child with an instruction booklet similar to those present in Lego. This encourages problem solving and systematic manipulation. The toy also includes a fully functioning crank and shaft mechanism that is visible once it's assembled and while the toy walks and flaps its wings. This exposes the child to the ideas of operational thinking. So now that I had an idea of how the toy would look and work, I had to make sure that the average South African girl could play with it and benefit from the skills it intended to develop. Here I focused on two important aspects, those being accessibility and inclusivity. So now on the side of accessibility, there were another two focuses, first being how to make it affordable. So this was accomplished by using simple cost-effective components in order to keep the theoretical sales price of the toy somewhere between 100 and 250 Rand. The second aspect is where the storybook that introduces us to Aisha comes into play. The main purpose of this storybook is to explain the engineering behind the toy in a child-friendly manner. This means that in households where parents may be absent or not well educated in STEM themselves, the child can still educate themselves. This means that they are less hindered by the circumstances of their upbringing. The storybook also leads us into the inclusivity aspect. It provides the perfect platform for a young girl to find a role model in STEM. Representation is really important in a role model as it allows a child to better imagine themselves in the whichever role they aspire to. So if just one little girl can look at this story of mine and imagine herself as a young engineer like Aisha, then I will have accomplished my goal. In the future, I hope to develop a series of similar toys in order to bring about change. In the classroom, these toys can help educators who may not be comfortable with STEM themselves, encourage all their students to pursue engineering. 
Having girly STEM toys in shops will also help encourage parents and relatives to think about the gender roles they may be unknowingly enforcing upon their children. Ultimately, it was a very personal project for me. As I was doing my research, I was reminded of some childhood memories. Like one Christmas, when my brother was gifted this awesome robot toy, I got a bead set. <laughs> now some girls might like bead sets, and that's okay, but why is it that when you go to the shops looking for a pink sparkly unicorn robot toy, there are none? So what I ask of you today is to think about the little girls in your life. How can you encourage them to unapologetically own their space in STEM? When you go to the shops looking to buy them a toy, think about who they are. Would they prefer the robot over the bead set? Demand, create a demand for girly STEM toys by purchasing the ones that are available and ask the shop assistants, does the robot come in pink? Do the small things that can make a big impact on a little girl's life so that she can grow up thinking that femininity and engineering do go together.